Hi, Dr. Jennifer Marte, and today I'm going to tell you about Key Studio's Smart Eco-Friendly House. If you've done a Key Studio kit before, some of these sensors will be familiar to you. For example, there's a photoresistance, uh, ultraviolet, temperature and humidity sensor buzzer, for example. But there are some new additions to this kit. And I think one of the things I like most is this water wheel, which is both fun to put together fun to play with and fun to use. I also really like this acrylic roof. So on the other kits for the smart house and the smart farm, the roofs were solid so you couldn't see inside them. But now we've opened up the, um, we've opened up the house so that you can see through the roof, which I think is great. In addition to the house, you also get the codes to run the house, each sensor individually and then as an Internet of Things idea. This code is provided in both, uh, for both an Arduino and for Kids Block if that's what you choose to use. So, what did I think about this? If you have seen my review for the Smart House and the Smart Farm before, it's no surprise. I really, really liked those. I liked this as well. Um, I think this kit actually has various different improvements on the Smart Farm and Smart House from before. So, for example, these down here that are holding them in place, these little pieces were really hard to put on in the smart house originally, and now they go in and out really well. Another thing was the wiring inside the house, or the smart farm, I suppose, for the smart farm, was really tricky to do. Some of the wires were a little bit short, and you had to work really hard to get them into their place. In this kit, they've made the wires a little bit long, so not a problem. I also found that the codes worked really well, um, with the exception for me of this AD key down here, which I think I have a, a slight error with. Um, but they're checking to see if that's the case for all of them. Overall, I think for somebody who's interested in sensors and interested in the Internet of Things, this is a really nice kit. I've talked to some of my colleagues at work in um, the engineering department I'm in, and they think that this is really good, and they may actually use it in one of their classes coming up. I'm also going to show you some videos of the house in action now. So we have to have someone moving in front of the PIR and also a dark space and then the LED inside the house will come on. So if I cover up the photoresistor because it sees me for the PIR, the LED comes on. Here's the plant light. Here's the AD key and when I click different buttons it changes the LED which would be for the plants inside the house. So for example if I click here I get green, if I click here I get blue, and if I click here I get red. This is environmental monitoring in action. So we see that we have the temperature, humidity, UV, and the illumination here. If I were to cover up that illumination, we can see that the number will go down. And if we were to move the house so that UV is looking into the light, we can see the UV index has gone Water level sensing, as we can hear, it's nice and quiet when the water level is high enough, but if we drop below 50, we start to get a warning, which sounds like this. And if we get the water level to go up too high, we get a different sound. Similar story here, the soil humidity of zero, we get this sound, but if we increase the soil humidity, we can get it to stop the buzzer for a while, and if we had too much humidity, it would give us a different sound. Here's our automatic irrigation system. So right now, it sees that there's a lot of water over in the water tank, but not in the soil. So we can hear the pump trying to move the water from the water tank into the plants. And if we were to show that the soil is now humid enough, the pump stops. This code lets you control the water wheel using the AD key. So for certain ones of these, when you press it, it makes the pump come on, which would make the water come through onto the water wheel and make the water wheel spin. The final code is a summing up, and you're supposed to be able to switch between these different experiments using the AD key and clicking here. And then it tells you the different task here, but I found this challenging. Uh, the first one works though, so this is the one where if I cover up the light and it sees me, I get a night light. That one works really well for me. And it says task zero. If I click this button, 
It'll go to task one, but it doesn't immediately do anything for me. If I click it for a while, sometimes it will bring up soil, humidity, water level. Sometimes it brings up temperature and humidity. Other times it just sits on task one. To be perfectly honest, I didn't like this last bit of the code. I prefer just doing one at a time. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the bottom. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.